<clears throat> As you know, I come from a fairly large family, 10 children and I don't know how many grandchildren, like 60 some. So nephews and nieces and great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren. And as I probably have stated before, in, in our family being all 100% Irish, we have some of the uh, qualities of the Irish and some of the uh, challenges of the Irish. And, and one of the not uncommon in Irish culture is a, a what do, how do they say it in Irish? He, he has a love of the drink. <laughs> say, yeah. Alcohol, drugs, and so on. So it's not uncommon in my family on both sides to have that. And fortunately, so many of my nephews and family uh, have gotten the help they need and are doing very well. And one of my nephews, who I, I asked permission to talk about him tonight, he is uh, called Little Brian because he's named after me. But Little Brian's about this tall. He has about six kids, and he looks like a beanpole all the time, and he eats like a horse. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, Little Brian is just a quiet, saintly guy. You'd never know again of all the struggles he's gone through in his life. Well, he he had a serious, I suppose, the alcohol and and drugs. I think meth. I forget. Uh, it struggled, went to a couple of treatment centers and this and that. And now he's doing wonderful. But um, I was there one night at their house having dinner with them and his wife said, Brian, tell your uncle your story, how you came about to be uh, free in a sense, not you know, free in the sense of no longer using drugs or anything. Well, little Brian was studying, to, he was an electrician, he was a junior journeyman, or he was under the apprenticeship of an electrician and took him under his wing and was teaching to be an electrician, which he is. And he was still on drugs. And he talks about that, uh, you know, he'd been through treatments and so on and so forth. And he's, they're working in a project, just the two of them one day, and Brian said he's, he's working and the, the guy in charge is up ahead working on something else. He suddenly, this voice inside him, very commanding and sort of demonic, Brian was working with a knife and it said, take your knife and go and kill him. And Brian said he just like a robot, he started moving toward the man. And he said, halfway there, another voice, even more commanding but peaceful, said, look at the bucket on the left throw your knife in it, and walk out the door. So he turned and looked at the bucket, threw the knife in it, and walked out the door. He went home and stayed in his in the bedroom for two weeks. He'd come out to eat and so on and so forth. But he sat in there with the Bible and just read Scripture and prayed for two weeks. And at the end of the two weeks, the obsession went away, and he's never used drugs again. And that was many, many years ago now. But what he did is he, first of all, there were two comings to him. One was the demonic to continue in, in this terrible thing. And suddenly, something of God, even more powerful, took over and he responded to it. He, he had heard it and responded. And it saved his life and the life of another. And uh, <clears throat> that's what the Advent is about. This, you know, Jesus says, um, you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man traveling abroad. Orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Well, who is the gatekeeper? Well, in the next sentence, he answers it. He says, watch, therefore. In other words, you're the gatekeeper. We are the gatekeeper. I'm the gatekeeper. You're the gatekeeper. He says, watch. You do not when, know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or a cockroach or in the morning, any time. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping, not listening in, your con in our conscience to the voice of the Lord. I say to you, I say to all, watch. 
So we think about Advent as the coming of Christ into the world, which is truly what we do celebrate as the body of Christ, God becoming man. Never in the history of religions have that ever been heard of, and ever since has it been heard of, that God himself has become one of us to redeem us. But in Advent, let's look at how is it that he comes to us. We keep sort of looking toward this big event, which we do, it didn't celebrate. But day to day, God comes to us and he calls us to be the gatekeeper. In other words, to be people of prayer. Uh, we can't, we can, like Padre Pio said, the biggest thing about prayer is to show up. <laughs> Bring the body, the mind will follow later. And we never know in that time of prayer uh, how the prayer is going to go, this, that, the other thing. We just know if we stay in that habit of being attentive, being watchful, and praying that we are uh, awake when that movement of the spirit, as tiny as it can be, moves us from the inside, something in our life. So that's what we want to do this Advent, to pray that we watch, that we stay attentive, and just pray to be attentive to the movement of the Spirit within our conscience. Because the Spirit does that all the time. And the prayer is really growing to be attentive to that movement of the Spirit and be aware of it and respond when it happens to us. And it can save our life. And so that's what we, we want to do this Advent, to be watchful in prayer. What is God saying to me this Advent? You know, some of the things this morning I was thinking of the other day, I had a couple of things I want to do this Advent, a couple of people. One is to write to someone and apologize for, I feel like I hurt them at one point in their life. And uh, not necessarily a big thing, but I, I do want to do that. And to another person, I'm going to write and thank them uh, during a critical point in my life, they stood up for me. And without them, I probably wouldn't have survived it. And so those are some things the Spirit is moving me to do. So you ask yourself, as you go through Lent, pray to be attentive and watchful. Because you're the gatekeeper of your soul in that sense. And pray that when the Lord visits you in your conscience, that we respond in a way that will bring us life and prepare us for his coming.